Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our, our playthrough of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. We, uh, man, this fifth case sure has a lot of investigation. Uh, we are in investigation part four, part two, and we have reached our first impasse. So let's just start clicking, baby. It's what I like to do. Don't worry, there's a lot of trial, too. I can handle a lot of trial. I like trial. This, not so much. Okay, so this is where we were. I feel like probably this is what we have to do. So, if you all are unfamiliar, what's going on here is... We have finally made it inside the interior of Windabanks where the murder occurred. This is the dead guy down here. And our good friend Ginny has been... I mean, she's been... They, they think it's her. But we know it's not her. We found the gun, the murder weapon, everything. I'm just ready to go to trial. I don't know what I'm still looking for. Let's show him the pawnbroker's ticket. Oh, this was the weird thing that we figured out. Oh. We have this, like, stereoscopic image of a cat. I don't know what that's for. It's giving us no check here because... Oh, I was like, Suzato's gone. So this is the overcoat. And we have the other one for a small box. So I guess we're looking for a box. Like, we found the big box that the manuscript is in. I haven't seen a small box. I thought that could be it, but it's not. Could be missing. Uh, okay. What do you make of the crime scene here? Pshaw, you've got eyes, haven't you? Use them! It is what it looks like. Nothing more, nothing less. Get Iris in here. The Iris Sword Soul. Last night, at shortly after the hour of one in the morning, Scotland Yard police attended or er, attended the scene. The one and only door to the storeroom was locked from the inside. We took the liberty of smashing the door in. The victim was discovered prostrate on the floor, thus wise. And next to the aforementioned body, we discovered the vile gutter child. The gun was in her hand. And the key to the door in her pocket. I'd say... Of course it is. It's okay. Hmm. Mr. Sholmes is unconscious. Alright, let's figure out... Maybe we should go to Sholmes's? Wait, no. Not this Sholmes's. This Sholmes's. Nope. This isn't gonna do anything. This guy sucks and he's gone. Perhaps she has the key still and we can get it off her? Nope. I don't... Couldn't see a reason why it would be in here. We haven't looked much out here, but like, there's just not much to look at. Let's 
try the main shop again. No, we did the stereoscope. I don't think there's anything we're missing here. This is the stereoscope. Oh, a cactus. Well, what's the clue? Oh, is the calendar he was peering at? Well, we already did the calendar. Okay, it's nothing in here. Did you inspect the newest item? Come on, man. No helpers. We did, though. We actually did. We literally did. It also wasn't an Alp. We inspected it. There's all sort of crap in here. Wow, look at all this crap. Oh? Oh, wow. in that box. What's going on over here? We have the, the palace with the chalice and the uh, the vessel with the pestle. We we're still missing that big ass thing. Uh, the violin's back. The Stradivarius. Uh, let's, uh, check over here. This is her shit. The Adventure of the Catty Man. Alright. Here are her little potions. She's going to kill us. Here's a tea set. Ugh, investigating sucks, man. All right, here. I guess we haven't investigated this, uh, but it's just a bunch of bullshit. What a nice, what a nice, uh, what a nice little girl. Alright, how about this big-ass desk? Uh, the big clock. I love clocks. Oh, why is that? Uh, whatever this is. The books. Ten days. Uh. 
All right, nothing here. To the hospital? We've mostly done the hospital already, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there's nothing really going on. All right, that's what I got to say, too. Um... Oh, wait, hold up. Oh, that's the bed? This is the bed. Weird. Strange man. Oh, come on. Let's move over here. Oh! These are new. These are crutches. Uh, let's check this little note up here. Nope. Nothing important. Well, thank you, the real Kamyar. I appreciate it. Uh, nothing to even examine here. We did everything here already. Baker Street. We already did this. Windebank's main shop. Uh, maybe we can present her the photograph. <laughs> How about your own manuscript? My manuscript. Mr. Sholmes said he deposited a window banks and he had. It's so strange. What is it about this particular story? I worked so hard on it. I would hardly say I can't publish it. I don't think that's it. <laughs> Although. Hmm. All right, let's go back in the in the room. I've already spoken to him about everything. Let's show him the manuscript, you know? She, she, he would like to see this, I'm sure. Is that what I think it is? Your ladyship's latest? Yes, my latest story. Ah! I don't suppose I'm in it? Hmm, I can't really remember. Ah, yes, yes, of course. Well, uh, I will await its publication with neat with anticipation. <sighs> okay, that didn't help. Uh, how about this? Not helpful? How do you feel about the white cat photograph? Or the representation papers. Or this one. Oh, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, he's going to show us the little box. This is a second ticket. Hmm. Is that right? Oh, good! Ah, uh, how could I have missed this? This ticket was the one in the pocket in Mr. McGilded's overcoat. You mean to tell me there was another one? Hmm. All right. Mr. McGilded deposited another article here with Mr. Windebank. A small box, was it? Oh, 
<laughs> that's enough sauce from you, sunshine. I like Gregson. There is one thing that springs to mind. The small box will no longer be in here. Yes. It's been forfeited. Let's go to the shelves out front. You're wasting your time. Alright, we'll look. I can't believe that's what did it. I'm almost mad about that. Uh, there are like a million little boxes, aren't there? Uh... So it's got to be locked. What the fuck, Suzato? Ah, that takes me back. It's been some time since Suzato-san last th last threw me. Well, shit. Then what are we supposed to do? Maybe it's up here? In the ledger or something? No. Damn. Not seeing anything new. Help me out here, Iris. I'm gonna go get the key from Ginny. Nope. assholes no check the clocks the, we can't check the clocks there's nothing interesting over there well let's go talk to um is there maybe a clue on here no Aguido. This is the box right here. It's in our house. I'm 
Sholmes has the box. Strong Arm has the box. The box is in here. Oh, maybe that's it up there. The box is in prison. The box is in the, I'm back here. I swear the box is in here. It's definitely in here. Where is the fucking box? Look at all the shit in here. This is the most annoying shit ever. Oh. That was not anything important. Yeah, this is the first Ace Attorney Memento that we've had. Naruhodo's consultancy. Do you want the sauce? No, I can figure this out. Okay, wise guy, let's see you take a crack at it. Um. Nothing in Baker Street. We talked to this guy? We already did. I guess we never... examined these. Okay. Where is the fucking box? This is kind of a box. This is a music box. Why are you all smile emojiing? There's nothing we can do with it anyway.
Well, if the box is the music box, how do we do that? Did this already. Wait, shit. Ah! Uh, God fucking damn it. God, that's annoying. No, when you examined it last time, Iris did not have the blood gun. Color Pog Champ. Mm, yeah, we we probably can guess on this, guys. Okay. That's true. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, this one just advances on its own. Oh, let's go visit Gina. You got it. Wait, we already got her the representation papers. What? Oh, right. Yes, yes, yes. Come on. Okay, okay, let's go, let's go. She's gonna give us the, uh, the key for sure. Ah, Gina. Don't bother me.
Well, the idea is that we will be able to change it. Oh, all right then. Who done it? We have no idea. You don't say. For example, the reason of you being there in the first place. I now know why you broke into window banks. Okay, how about representation? No! Jaina! No, you won't. It doesn't work like that. Alright, I'm gonna have to show her the... the papers. Behold. I mean, we have a lot we can... What's this? Eh? What, that? I don't know. They all look the same to me, these tickets. This one has blood on it. Ring any bells? Uh, all looks the same to me, blood. Alright, how about this one, eh? You remember this one? Okay, she said I don't want to I don't want to look at that. How about the portfolio? The oh, fuck. How about Oh, I know what'll I know what'll get her. Check this out. The new manuscript. Well, that's good then. She went to go steal the manuscript back for her friend. No. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right, yeah. I figured it's got to be worth a fair few pieces of silver, right? Oh, yes. No. Of course I weren't going to sell it. Oh. Well... <laughs> all right, all right. Why'd you do it? Why'd you do it? Oh. I just wanted to know the truth. That's all. Okay. Oh. Give it a rest, will ya? Okay, we are not gonna do that. Whoa. There's blood on this coat. Uh, 
uh, Gina? You know we have, like, a blood gun, right? Blood? You don't appear to have wounds, so could it be blood that's slathered from Mr. Windebank? Let's not beat around the bush here. I have a big gun that will resolve it. What are we working with? Purple? Uh-oh. Oh my god. That's the Grimace Shake! And the blood is reacted with a chemical to turn a purple color, which matches Mr. Thrice-Fired Mason. Omnibus case is actually solved. Mr. McGill killed him? I don't think that's true. Or is it? Yeah, he did say this. That's true. Uh, I mean, I don't know about that. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I simply don't believe it. Well, he walked free in quotes here. Before we came to Great Britain, a great friend of mine taught me a valuable lesson. Kazuma, yeah. Listen, Ryunosuke. We lawyers are only human. Which is why we must resort to our primary weapon. Gay sex. So I believe you. Unwavering. What's so funny, Gina? <laughs> okay, alright. English person try not to be racist challenge. At least you've learned your lesson now, have you? Say it again. Please allow me to represent you in tomorrow's trial. We did it. 
Do what you like. You Eastern lotter. I don't know what you are. Trial, 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 trial. After 10,000 years, we have ended the investigation. Ugh. Oh. <gasps> oh, I know who it is. Oh, it's Greg. <laughs> Greg, what's going on? Good grief, listening in. Uh... <laughs> okay, goodbye. We have heard a lot about this second thing that's happening. I mean, we could go to the Supreme Court, right? I'm gonna miss uh, Suzato. since we arrived in London. We were finally setting in. It's just so sudden. I don't know what to think. Facets. Oh. What a what a beautiful thing to say. So true. She knows something. Oh? I know, but... Okay. Okay, yeah, 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 that's helpful. In what way? Not the takedown. The Suzato shutdown. Please. 
please, I implore you. If we have to voice our goodbyes, I won't be able to hold back my tears. Oh. Well, might as well go to bed. We're on the ground. Trial. Oh, you have no idea how happy I am to see that word. Oh, thank God. When I awoke the following morning, Suzato-san was gone. Outside the window, the rain came down in sheets, and so began an even longer day than the last. Oh, son of a bitch. Oh, okay, we're here. Hi, Gina. Morning. Determined to prove your innocence today? I'm sure we can do it. So where's your friend, then? Suzato. Uh, she had to leave. You're right with that, are you? It's fine. You only get one chance. This trial today is all we have. Oh, good, you brought the cat. Great. The cat has come. Hi, Waggy. You like the good news or the bad news? All right, I know the bad news. Who's the prosecutor? Oh. Okay. It's, uh, the rain's bad. Okay. Alright. Yeah, that'd be nice. What's the good news? I don't... Neither of these mattered very much, Iris. Tell me the fucking... Uh, yes, let's hope so. Uh, it was... Good. The paper's here. Great, that'll come up. Great. Oh, good! She's gonna hang out with us. And she's bringing the gun, too. That's not true. What's happening here? I feel like there's something here we are not being told. Poor Gina. 
got a Guido. Here we go. Oh, son of a bitch, of course it's Van Zeeks. What the fuck are you doing here? Lord Van Zeeks. Remind me, how many years ago was it that you withdrew from public prosecution? It was some five years ago, my lord. Yes, and then two months ago, you resurfaced somewhat unexpectedly, and here you are again today. Are there some circumstances of which the court should be aware that led to this erratic behavior? In what one might describe as your former life five years past, you dealt exclusively in matters concerned with the highest echelons of society and government. Yet today, you choose to try a simple case of burglary and murder. I confess I find it more than a little befuddling, counsel. There are two types of persons I cannot abide. Firstly, those wealthy scoundrels who hide behind a mask of philanthropy to cheat the public at large. McGilded, right. And secondly, even more loathsome, those wily scoundrels who masquerade as allies, confidence tricksters from tiny islands in the Far East, the Nipponese! Huh? Let's see if I read that right. The two people you hate are the rich and the Japanese? Uh, did he really just say that? Thank you, Iris. What are you talking about? What the fuck? An alarmingly scathing explanation. What's wrong with you? All right, let's check out the jury. What the fuck? Whoa! Uh, her again. Great. Oh, he's a doctor now. Good. Her again. And she's telegramming. Whoa! I am visiting London for sightseeing. I would like to take bus to Crystal Tower, please. Uh, this is that Russian warlord. Did we run out of jurors? Allow me to begin with a word of warning to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury. In short... There has never been a more self-evident case of cold-blooded murder. The victim, Mr. Pop Windebank, proprietor of a pawn shop on Baker Street, was shot from behind and died instantly. The prosecution presents this photographic print of the crime scene. Ooh, what if he actually died of getting the COVID vaccine? As the... <laughs> <laughs> I play it like I, I notice four people in like Q gear on the pro on the uh, jury and I go wait a minute hold up as the court will observe there's a single bullet wound just below the gentleman's left shoulder Rebecca says you have ruined me by the way I went to go get food and I went mmm hongwe <laughs> Moving on to the findings of the Scotland Yard coroner. His report states the bullet entered the body on a rising diagonal trajectory. It means the victim was shot by someone significantly shorter in height than himself. 
Someone like the accused, you might say. The prosecution wishes to present the autopsy report and crime scene photograph as evidence, my lord. I now ask the court to turn its attention to the plan of the establishment where the incident occurred. When the accused was discovered at the scene, she had in her hand the gun used to fire the fatal bullets. This is not good. Objection. We can't jump to conclusions here. We must assume her guilt because of what she has to do to survive. You got it, chat? My learned Nipponese friend. It is you who mustn't jump to conclusions. The prosecution has barely begun presenting its case. Conveniently, this appalling act of murder did not go unobserved. There were witnesses. After their testimony, this girl's true nature will be exposed. Pitiful pick purse or cold-hearted killer. Here's to establishing the truth. Oh my god, it's already off? We just started. <laughs> Name's Nash Sulkin! Occupation is a baddie, professional baddie. I'm a professional baddie. Name's Ringo Skulkin, uh, same as him. Tobias Gregson, Scotland Yard Inspector. <laughs> That's right, we're what they call the Three Skulkin Brothers. No. What are you looking at me like that for? Don't lump me in with you lot. Oh, blimey, that's cold. Don't you know what we're going through? It's our older brother. Lost contact with him we have. So we were scouring every shady corner of the capital. And then last night we come across you. The very spit of the bloke. Ain't that right, Ringo? He is now, she is. Big bruv sulky. Come on, leave it out, you two. Sulky Skulkin? Inspector Sulky Gregson? Begging your pardon, my lord, but the name's Tobias. What are you doing in the witness stand? The Skulkin brothers are currently under arrest, my lord, on suspicion of theft. Hmm. Thieves, are they, these three? Two... Begging your pardon. Please don't lump me in with this lot. Two nights ago, these two brothers illegally entered an establishment with the intent to burgle. And in the course of their nefarious activities, they became embroiled in a far more sinister crime. While attempting to burglarize the pawn brokery, they witnessed its proprietor's murder. The various trespasses of these brothers is not the subject of today's proceeding, though they will naturally face trial in the very near future. Uh, yeah. Okay, Gregson. Mm. 
Jesus Christ. <laughs> Get out of it. I guess we're fucking taking testimony from these two. We was walking down Baker Street in the small hours, and a gas door was ajar, see? It was like some kind of sign, begging for us to go in it was. But once we got inside, call blimey lummy, we had a gunshot from the back room. We went to see what was what, but the door was locked from the inside. We never done nothing, governor, we never took nothing. We just left after that nice and quiet. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the witness's testimony is consistent with the crime scene in every detail. <laughs> the doors providing access to the storeroom from the main shop was indeed locked from the inside, and within, only the victim and the accused were found. Hmm. It does appear to be an overwhelmingly simple case. Still, the defense may cross-examine, of course. <laughs> of course. Counsel? Uh, yes. Hold it! Are you sure? I feel like that's not true. How would I know? Leave me alone. <laughs> That's conjecture. <laughs> Perhaps, but it changes nothing. Whoa, that's breaking the rules. Yes, and... Right, that's what happened. Hold it! What are you trying, you had to go in? God moves in mysterious ways, they say, don't they, Ringo? They do, Nash, they do. Must have been some sort of providence, I reckon. God's will often presents itself as the whim of thieves, does it? It weren't no whim, I'm dead sure of that. It weren't, Nash, it weren't, like we said at the time. You don't just find doors open in the middle of the night like that. No two ways about it. Okay. So terrible liars. Cut it out. Hold it. Just the one. Are you sure? The firearm used belonged to the victim himself. Yes, he used to try and kill himself all the time. It was out of rounds. Okay. Well, already we've got a problem. A single round was discharged from the murder weapon. How crazy. Then how did one get into the calendar? Well, uh, uh, mm. 
broadly speaking, humans respond in one of two ways to a gunshot. Okay, all right. These two are not... Please shut the fuck up. Did you not fire a gun at that person? They fired a gun? Ah! Blow me, governor! Very funny. You were armed with a gun. As you fled the scene, you fired the gun at London's greatest detective, Herlock Sholmes. On the night in question, this pair were arrested by the police within minutes of their discovery at the crime scene. Their countenance gave them away. Hehe. <laughs> and when searched, a firearm was indeed found in their possession. Furthermore, the barrel shows signs of a shot having been fired from it. The prosecution invites his lordship to examine the firearm. Now, my learned Nipponese friend. Yeah? Here's to you successfully presenting the evidence. Objection! What? Objection! <sighs> Great. If the defense fails to prove evidence in support of its rash claim... We shall have no choice but to toast your incompetence and move on. Evidence that these two fired the gun before they left Windebanks? <sighs> we have something. The blood. Let's, um... Let's examine the guns. We haven't really seen much on these guns. This gun looks normal. Gun also looks normal. Well, here's one. We can present this. Take that! The evidence is in this portfolio. What on earth do you have there, Council? During the course of our investigation, we discovered a number of blood stains. Not trusting the police to do the job they're trained to do. How arrogantly Nipponese of you. What is wrong with you, asshole? Well, I mean, it's this one, right? Take that! It's a photographic print taken at Windebank's pawnbrokery on the day of the incident. From the scene of the crime, is it? Is that a bullet hole? And if my eyes do not deceive me, it appears the bullet is lodged there. Indeed it is. The bullet pierced Mr. Windebank's calendar. The date is the 16th of April, the very day of the pawnbroker's death. That's right. And while it isn't irrefutable, the defense believes this is credible evidence the witnesses did fire around from their gun in the pawnbrokers that night. I mean, that's pretty... I mean, it's, it's as irrefutable as we're going to get. Don't you do it. 
Oh. <laughs> Pray forgive me. Oh. On the night in question, these brothers entered the pawn brokery illegally. And like the bold baddies they claimed to be, opened fire on the new arrivals before fleeting back to the street. Take it easy there, governor. We had a deal. Tell him, Sulky. I have nothing to add. Whoa. It seem now that I owe my learned Nipponese friend a word of gratitude. What do you mean? What I mean is that you have helpfully confirmed an important fact. As has been established, at the point of their arrest, a single shot had been fired from the brother's gun. If that shot found its target in Mr. Sholmes, then clearly these witnesses cannot be accused of the fatal shootings of the proprietor and victim. I mean, that's fine. There's never going to be these two. Then why are they on the stand? They missed everything. Amazing. There we go. What a catalog, eh, fellas? Now then. <laughs> Where is he going with this? Oh, no. Oh, no. God damn it. Why didn't we get these? What the fuck? Why did we not have this picture? Oh my god. That's as bad as it could possibly be. That is as bad as it could possibly be. It's so fucking over. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. That's, that could be true. But this doesn't prove she murdered her. Oh man, this is really bad. This is so insanely bad. That's 
disastrous. What is he on about? Guilty. Fuck. Guilty. 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 Ooh, I like him. Oh boy. See one picture and you say guilty? Of course, right? Oh, you refuse to admit defeat again. How unsurprising. You stinking ass bitch. We beat you every other time we've met. And unfortunately, that's going to be it from us. I am uh, very sorry, but we've already gone way over. After what the fuck? Hold up. They used the auto. We're about to conduct a summation exam. Oh, no, this is the summation examination. Okay. Whew. Okay. We're about to conduct a summation examination of all these people who all said guilty immediately. I will be uploading all the gameplay on YouTube. Yeah, for sure. All right, so we do have a print of this fucking girl shooting a gun. I actually feel pretty good. So when we last left, uh, they showed a picture of the girl shooting the guy in the head. And we have to convince them that it's not true. All the evidence... Was, okay, so look at this. Like, it looks like... Big Daddy Cruel, thank you for the five... We did lose Suzato, yeah. So it looks bad, obviously. I mean, it, it, it don't look great. But she's, like, firing up in the air? And that revolver only has one bullet. Let's see if we can. Wow, there's really nothing we can do with this, huh? Has it ha it's not helpful. Also not helpful. What the fuck is he talking about? Jeez, these five are not helpful. All right, let's uh, get pressing. You know what they say? Hold it! Are you sure? You're Mr. Natsume's landlord, Mr. Garadev, aren't you? We must stop meeting like this. Ah, you're that lawyer chap. Well, there's a turn up for the books. Yes, a rather turbulent time we had back then. Some extraordinary events took place at your house, that's for sure. Luckily, Mr. Sholmes and I were able to get to the bottom of it all. I think we did a rather lot for you, didn't we? I mean, obviously. I wouldn't suge be suggesting you should change your leaning. <laughs> uh, can't be denied, I suppose. The curse of the Garadeb house. Lodgers moved out, I couldn't get a Bali soul to take up. Oh, sorry. Yes, can't be denied. You did do a lot. But not for us. That's for dashed certain. Of course. There can be no suggestion of that being the reason I'm leading toward guilty here. Obviously. Obviously. 
<sighs> Hold it! All right, what's going on here? Polishing the bench again. What do you mean by filthy eyesores? I'm racist. Oh, she really is. A little harsh. I don't much care for the fascist housemaid. Uh, I am pretty sure that Herlock Sholmes doesn't do that. Jeez. Huh? Jeez. Okay, well, we can... I mean, this this one we can do. Um, we know that this guy on the end thinks the brothers are innocent. In mother In Motherland, we say never judge by claws, judge by head. I am convinced the brothers are innocent. All right, sure, let's figure this out. Please tell me you're not Vilan Borshevik, the Russian revolutionary. R -r -r revolutionary uh, Da, I believe there is such a rumor. It's just a rumor. Ah, you see, I have unfortunate appearance. I look like wish is criminal. Alright. People call me revolutionary, murderer, autocrat. All right, well, uh, duh, maybe they went inside pawnbroker shop, but they have done nothing wrong. That is all I want to say. All right, well, there's one that we can fuck around. Tell me something, Iris. The jurors are chosen at random, aren't they? Yes! It's amazing, isn't it? We keep getting the same people. Why do we have a Russian tourist? I don't know. Something's going on here. I mean, obviously, we know something's going on here. All right, let's pit you and you. Objection! Those two statements clearly contradict each other. Good lord! Counsel, explain yourself. My statement? Con contra. Juror number six, you've got the wrong end of the stick. I do not have stick, I have mass. As juror number two said earlier, when the Skulkin brothers fled the scene the night in question, they fired a shot from their revolver. Yes, they shot poor Sholmes in the abdomen. Surely you're not going to tell now the cord you didn't hear. Abdom. Sir. Sorry, sorry. English still learning. You are telling the cord you didn't hear? Mm, forgive me, I did not hear. Ah, here it is worth. Abdomen. If this is what means, should say in plain English, I am Russian, not native speaker. So, you're telling me these brothers who look like criminals were lying. They say before we never done nothing, but truth is they shot a detective. Da, this is double negative. Yes. Lying is wrong! <laughs> Holy shit, no! No, come on, don't hurt the mouse! <laughs> This means, when they said we never took nothing, it was big fat lie! Uh, well, it could have been. Enough! I trust no one now! Uh, please don't hurt the mouse. I must investigate crime scene myself! Oh. Oh. Okay, I guess so. Tut tut. Calling on the prosecution in the middle of a summation examination of all times. Okay, well, was anything stolen? Um. Hmm. 
Good. You were right, I did not understood the situations. Oh. I'll take it. Okay, let's check that post shooting photograph. By the way, we only got him in Lake of Lies are many dead fish. We must find truth. Therefore, I say not guilty verdict. That was easy. It wasn't because we have to convince fucking four of them and the other person didn't change her mind. I wonder if I can tell if that's a different picture of the cat. Is there a way I can look at them, like, real quick, back to back? Da, da, da. Those are all there. One, two, doll. One, two, doll, skull, scales, dog. One, two, doll, skull, scales, dog. Fuck. Looks like nothing's missing. I wish I could tell which is which, but those there's such a minor difference in between the two of them. Like the book moved a bit to the right. I, mean, I guess that's possible, but it doesn't really show us anything, right? Alright, well, let's keep going. All right, how about this freak? Um. That's true. Now we have the telegram. Excuse me, what's going on here? <clears throat> what? Do you have something to say about that remark? As if I couldn't guess. Oh, you bet I do! Say that again! Hmm. Goodness, are you talking to me? Uh, yeah. You think stereoscopes are just toys, do you, huh? Absolutely. You just don't know! Pardon? Oh? Oh? This is the most interesting fucking summation examination in the history of time. stereo oh i understand the principle well i think so okay i remember this i have to fucking cross my eyes again here we go with uh, the stereoscope in mind. Okay, here we go. Uh, 
I'll admit I can't. Hold up. Oh! The lamp! Yes, yes, that's it, you see. That's the other amazing power of stereoscopes. Other amazing power. What the deuce? <clears throat> As I said before, if you try to look at two identical pictures using a stereoscope, it won't work at all. The slight shift in the positions of certain objects lets you see pictures three-dimensionally. In other words, even though at first glance it seems like the objects haven't moved at all between the two pictures, there must have been a slight shift in their positions. Wow, this, um... This definitely, um, oh, this is the wrong, yeah. Yes, there must have been. Man, this would have done a lot better on the 3DS. Why does the shift exist? What's the answer? Someone moved it. First was taken at 1, 30 minutes later, they shifted. That means sometimes someone tampered with things on the counter. Someone tampered? New information, stop. Not mentioned in testimony so far, stop. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the question is now clear. We know the items on the countertop were moved, but by whom? Are you suggesting you might know? Of course. Well, it, ha it had to be these assholes, right? Wait, uh, this uh, does not agree with what the brother said in testimony before. They said they did not have time to pull dukes from Lucy Lockett's. But this is another lie! Is this what you're saying? Uh, yeah. Now hold on there a minute, you can't be sure of that. I quite agree, the accused is a common pick purse after all. I think that's unlikely. And why exactly? As you can see from this photographic print, the defendant was pointing a gun at the victim. Then they went in, and then they shot. Why would she touch anything on the counter? But the accused is a big purse! Come and gutter trash! Why look any further for the wrongdoer here? Because the Skulkin brothers are also gutter trash! That's how you gotta reason with these people. They were looking for something on the victim's counter that night. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, if you would condemn the defendant on the ground, she's a pickpocket. Would it not be right and proper to thoroughly scrutinize testimony given against her by the two thieves? Well said. I, for one, would like to hear more. <laughs> Stupid. All right, can we get anyone else off this, please? That was a lot of work. Okay, the stereoscope guy. All right, can we get one of the racist British... Ah, damn it. Oh, she's like, I have to go get a stereoscope. It's crazy. Alright, we're not gonna get the two racists. That's fine. Well, fuck. Alright. God. Lord Van Zeeks. Oh, is he gonna do it? Okay. <sighs> oh, we going to part two? To be continued? Yes, we are. All right. Well, chat, I'll see you momentarily. And we're back. <laughs> Gina must be innocent. After all, stereoscopes exist. We're so fucking back. Uh, 
Uh oh. Why did you bring this fucking guy up here again? Gre Greg. <laughs> oh yeah, Govna. Uh, I did, Gov. I did. Are you stinking ass bitches? A cool blimey! Earlier in the trial, you gave the following testimony about your actions after you entered Windebanks. Well, it were Bedlam soon as what it? It was Nash, it was. However, that was a lie. You brothers. God blind me! On the night in question, rifled through the items on the victim's counter. We never done nothing of the sort. How'd you figure that out? Okay, run it back. <laughs> Folks! I gotta say, forgive me the discourtesy of crushing my hallowed chalice in these halls of justice. A thought worth pondering, perhaps. Say no more, Gov! Alright, we did knock a few things over. We weren't rifling or nothing. It was when we had a gunshot, see? Made us both jump and all their stuff went flying. Mommy, it didn't have. Give me a fright. We was thinking a shoot would come out of the door and get us next. We stuck everything back where we found it and scampered straight out into the black. Not ransack. That's right, it's more like we tidied it up. Sorry. By their own admission, these brothers entered the pawn brokery under dubious circumstances. However, they panicked and fled on hearing the gunshot, having first made good their mess. The way you say it, we hardly sound like roughs at all. We don't, Nash, we don't. Hmm. All right, let's press him. And also, I love that Gregson's here. It's... <laughs> I love his little jowls. Hold it! If that's the case, why didn't you testify to that effect in the first place? Well, you know, we aren't exactly squeaky clean, are we? In fact, now, as a result of lying in your previous testimony, that's exactly what you've done. Landed yourself even in more trouble. Ah, well, um... That's rotten luck. Hi, MT, just curious if tomorrow would work, if something like 20 hours from now you're free. Uh, unfortunately, I am probably busy until Friday. But I'm free Friday. I think. Uh, Friday evening. We never ransack nothing. That's me. Hold it. Well, it shocked one of us that much. Oh, he's go oh, he's going in. My boy's going in. Excuse me. Greg, what's up? Like I keep saying, I don't appreciate being lumped in with these scoundrels. No, something to add about the testimony. He's hungry. It's probably nothing, of course. I wouldn't even bother to mention it, only is cases don't get sold if you ignore the little details. Alright, just what can you just explain it? 
As you know, we brought these fellas into the yard for questioning last night. And the statement they gave us told a slightly different story to what they're saying now. <laughs> I did it! You claimed you heard the victim shout something out before the gunshot. Granted, it's only a minor detail, but still, I can't help feeling like perhaps you've been a bit sloppy with your testimony here, eh, fellas? I'm gonna fucking kill them! Easy, easy. We'll get it right this time. You fuckers. You two are a shit of peace. Hold it! Give me that gun. If you don't want to get shot, give me that gun. Well, that's interesting. If you don't want to get shot, give me that gun. <clears throat> and the voice you heard, it was that of the victim. Mm. On me granny's life. Of course it was. That would mean... You both knew Mr. Windebank and the sound of his voice. Eh? Nah, 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 nah. We didn't know the geezer. If you value your lives, you will ensure your testimony is accurate and true. Oh, on me granny's life it is. On his granny's life it must be. It's a good job his granny's dead. Yeah, I'm wondering about this, too. Mr. Windebank had a gun in his hands. Well, maybe it was self-defense in that case. Fuck. An empty threat. Uh, his own head. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hmm. This is interesting. Not on your life! It went deathly quiet after that it did. Put the wind right up out me. Interesting. <laughs> okay. There's just so much in this testimony. To confirm, would it be correct to say that neither of you set foot inside the storeroom? That's right, Carl, that's right. Hold it! Ah, uh, yeah, uh, we were a bit hasty there. We was, we was. Police found this revolver in your possession, right? Uh, well, yeah. Hold it! I feel like you probably did.
This is interesting. So they claim that they've never... Yeah, I know. There's not a lot in here. No, I appreciate that, but no. Hmm. So what are we doing here? So they clearly know Mr. Windebank. They want me to present something. I'm trying to figure out what exactly. Well, here is a, here's an interesting one. They've acted it out a couple of times and it doesn't line up with the autopsy report. Let's, let's run that back. But they didn't see him, so I don't even know if that's worth pursuing. Let's, let's try it. I don't know if that's it. I don't think that's it. There's not a good place to present that evidence. We got a yield. A yield. Give me the gun. I it really doesn't jive with the the autopsy report at all. Let's check the paper. We haven't read the paper yet. Oh. Oh. Secrets being leaked to foreign agencies. All right, let's check the front of this. Aren't they being contradictory, saying they saw the old bloke with a gun and now saying they didn't even see him? Uh, no. We know that he had a gun. Uh, so there's really no way to do this, right? Like, he always has a gun. This is rough. This is a really rough bit of testimony. I'm gonna try the um I'm gonna try the autopsy report here. Objection. Fucked. All right, we'll save scum. Or on the next one.
you don't want to get shot, give me the gun. Grayling, you know the subathon's over, right? Grayling, think of the 20 gifties. If you didn't get one, dodge in chat. It's as simple as that. Oh, is it? This is just like... This is the worst testimony ever. Um, there's just like so much going on here that they're lying about. The order of it, not knowing Mr. Windebank, and the other thing that's kind of fucky is, um, They're saying he was, like, facing her, but he was shot in the back. N54 Lionheart? Thank you for the 25 gifties! You... You all understand that this isn't going on anymore, right? Well aware. <laughs> oh, okay. So there's ammunition still loaded in five of these six cylinders. A single shot has been fired from it. The bullet that hit Hurley, isn't it? Yes. Gray Lane, thank you for the five. Man, this is really rough. Can we use the stereoscope? N54 Lionheart, thank you for the 10. Okay, I'm going to save scum. Gray Lane, thank you for the 20. Holy fucking moly. All right, rather than the autopsy report, let's show off this picture of him. Nope. N54 Lionheart, thank you for the... 50 gifties! Holy fuck. Objection. Got him. Okay. It was just on the wrong statement. So you're saying that on the night in question, the victim, Mr. Windebank, was wielding a gun. Is that correct? I say, Golf, you've got the picture? You couldn't have known this, but sure. And yet, photographic evidence obtained immediately after the incident clearly shows Mr. Windebank was not holding a firearm. Oh, yeah, that's what I saw in the picture as well. Objection! Objection! There can be no question that the victim's revolver was used in the incident. I would remind the court that Mr. Windebank's gun was found at the scene. Is it time to become an exclusively Ace Attorney streamer, Mr. BT? I mean, we can run out of Ace Attorney. We're like halfway done with the entire series. Not only was it identified as the murder weapon, but it was found in the accused's hand. Yeah, that Motula used the victim's own gun to finish him off. Give me that gun. Kind of thing. Hold it. Hold it, bitch. Stay exactly where you are. If the crime had taken place as you've so... Okay, here we go. It would give rise to an undeniable and significant inconsistency in the final moments you just acted out. You you intrigue me, my learned friend, but let's see some evidence to support your claim. Oh, well. Uh, I actually do have it. Uh, where's the autopsy? Take that! According to their testimony, the witnesses claim to have heard a shout of Give me that gun, followed by the gunshot. 
Indeed. Yes, that's right. Now, if that testimony is true, it would mean that the moment of death, the victim and his attacker would have been facing each other. I was a little ahead. I was a little ahead. However, in the autopsy report, it clearly states that the victim died instantly after being shot from behind. Ah. So, as I stated before, there is an undeniable inconsistency in your testimony, Mr. and Mr. Skelton. God, imagine being Van Zeeks right now. I would just... But, but it's the good, honest truth! It is, Nash, it is! Hmm. Did I hear you right just now? You saw Mr. Windebank holding a gun. Um, something, something like that might have slipped out. Ladies and gentlemen, you have all just heard the admission by these two witnesses that on the night in question, they saw with their own eyes the victim wielding a gun, which can only mean that despite their testimony to the contrary, the Skulkin brothers must have encountered the victim in person. Ah! Oh. Um. Order! 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 Witnesses! Fuck you. Well, the thing is... It would seem that my previous warning fell on deaf ears. I made it quite clear that false witness would be the death of you. Um, ever so sorry, governor. Truth is, um, cut it out, Nash. Cut it out. If we blab now, you know what it'll do to us. Hey. Let me make your position here perfectly clear. You will talk. There is no other option available to you. Rolf, come on, the game's up. Oh, but he'll have our guts for garters. In case it hasn't quite sunk in yet, no matter how hard you try to hide it, the truth will come out. Um. Okay. On pain of death. I suggest you make yourselves fully aware this is your very last chance to tell the truth. Who is this person that they're so frightened of? All right. Oh, said it to them. Oh, this is insanely crazy testimony telling us the moments before the victim was killed in the storeroom, you encountered him in the main part of the shop. Ah, yeah. Sorry. Well, we found ourselves at an interesting juncture. This changes matters considerably. But to be honest, Governor, this time, we ain't got nothing more to hide. Very well. What's going on here? When you say geezer, I presume you mean the victim and proprietor of the shop, Mr. Windebank. Who else? So it would seem the victim was already in the storeroom when these brothers entered the premises. Which means Ginny was in there as well. That doesn't make sense. How would he have emerged from the same room all alone? is going on here? Couldn't tell ya. No way, Cobba. Hold it! You mentioned that Mr. Windebank shouted these words in your previous testimony, too. However, you claimed you heard him yelling them on the other side of the storeroom door. Oh, why, uh, he... Did we? The truth is he was shouting those words at you, wasn't he? Um, well, uh, what the scallop? Was the victim wielding a gun at the time? Was he ever? So what you're saying is, you definitely saw Mr. Windebank with the gun at that time, is that right? It is, Gov, it is spot on. Hold it! 
I noticed you mentioned the counter in your previous testimony, too. Well, yeah, of course we did. He knocked over a load of books, a candlestick, and some skull, whatnot. That got tangled in some marionette, whatnot. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Problem. Hold it! Were you intending to shoot Mr. Winterbank? Interesting. <clears throat> Hold it! What a weird fucking testimony. Nothing at all, Gov. anyone. From the moment you admitted that you'd encountered the, the victim face to face that night, the course of this trial changed completely. It did! What is your point, my learned friend? He stopped calling me Nipponese, which is good. God, who the fuck else could it have been? You have my attention. They aren't all this crazy. I mean, they're all pretty crazy. Let us return to this plan of the premises. The victim was killed in the storm, which was locked from the inside. Those are the facts. So pray, what other possible aim? Well, I actually... Respect of two conundrums. Two? Indeed. Namely, from what location did the culprit shoot the victim? And furthermore, where was the victim at this time? Okay, I think I can do this. Theoretically, could have fired it through the door, right? Take that! Take that! Continue. Looking at the stain of blood on the storm floor, it doesn't appear the body was moved after death, which tells us he was certainly shot while he was in the room. Where was the shooter when the fatal bullet was fired? <sighs> According to the Skulkin Brothers' earlier testimony... He was alive. <laughs> Mr. Windebank ran away through the door. We have to assume the door is open at the time. It was precisely at that moment that when the victim was fleeing for his life, 
that these brothers had the perfect opportunity to shoot the man in the back once he was inside the storeroom. Rising diagonal. Oh, geez. Can you think of someone who might be shorter than him? It would have been leaning forward, so even if a bullet was fired horizontally, it would still have entered on an upward trajectory. Objection! Objection! I'm sure my learned friend can't have forgotten that the storeroom door was found closed and locked from the inside. You claim the victim was shot as he fled into the room. Fuck, that is a... That is actually a pretty good uh, response. What if someone else locked the door? Yes, there is someone else who could have locked the storeroom door. Gina. I mean, it, it could have been Gina, theoretically. I don't know why she would. Take that! Obviously, the person who locked the door is the only other person inside the storeroom. Miss Gina Lestrade. OBJECTION! That's absurd. You're suggesting she deliberately engineered the sealed room. For what reason? Well, there's two guys with a gun right outside the door. Duh! Oh, yes, obviously. Before the two brothers arrived, Miss Lestrade and Mr. Windebank were in the storeroom together. Now, I don't know what went on between them at that time, but at some point, Mr. Windebank heard the intruders breaking into his shop, left the storeroom. Intruders, eh? That's us, bruv! If your theory is correct, that would leave the accused alone in the storeroom. Yes, it would. Then, probably only moments later, the victim fled back through the storeroom door, hoping to escape danger. Bang! Hit in the back by a bullet, Mr. Windebank fell to the floor where he was just outside the storeroom, and what we have to ask ourselves is, what would the defendant have done in that moment? I see where you're going with this! Outside the storeroom was a terrifying killer who had just murdered Mr. Windebank. As soon as that thought struck Miss Lestrade, she slammed the door shut and locked it, in order to save her own life. Hold it! Hold it! But I I mean, we ain't the ones who done it! You gotta believe us! Hey, fucker. That's blatantly untrue. I know for a fact you would. Before my own eyes, you shot Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Ah. There's only one logical conclusion here. Mr. and Mr. Skulkin, your brothers had every opportunity to have been the true perpetrators of the Windebank murder. Okay, there's one problem here, which is we have their gun and it's only missing one bullet. Chucky, 1833, thank you for the 10. Give these. If you didn't get one, dodged in chat. Okay, I mean, looks good. <laughs> An admirable effort, my learned friend. He's laughing? Oh! Here we go. I dare say. Such chicanery! CHICANERY! You're gonna let him get away with this? This chicanery? Is the bread and butter of the street performers in your provincial eastern nation. But such blatantly malicious conjuring tricks amount to nothing more than inexcusable pet pettifoggery here. That's a new word. Pettifoggery. The hypothesis you put forward so ostentably, credibly, cannot and will not stand. Because, you see, it contains a fatal flaw. Do you mean to tell me you're unaware of your logic's failing? The fatal flaw in my learned friend's argument is really very simple to understand. Assuming you're not too dim-witted to count bullets- OH SON OF A BITCH! I shouldn't have said that shit out loud. Counsel! Uh, yes, sir. Tell the court, how many bullets were found at the scene of the crime? One, two. I mean, there's one in the guy, I guess. Correct. The first, that which hit the victim in the back, ending his life. And the second, that which struck the detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes, on his arrival at the scene. 
Well, then all we have to say is that there was someone else there. <clears throat> Your lordship's understanding is correct. We know there are two firearms involved in the incident. The revolver belonging to the victim, and the Skulkin Brothers revolver. The evidence shows a single bullet was fired from each gun. Now then, my learned friend. You yourself told the court only moments ago these two brothers shot Mr. Sherlock Holmes right before your eyes. I did? This Nipponese street performer presented an ostensibly credible argument. However, it was never anything more than a diversionary trick with no hope of standing up to scrutiny. Shut up. <clears throat> Order! Pray forgive the discourtesy of flinging the dregs of this hollowed nectar into the public gallery. Lord Van Zeeks! But this court needs to open its eyes. The accused, Miss Gina Lestrade, is no ordinary little girl. Despite her young years, she can regrettably no longer be described as a juvenile. Regrettably? No, the person in the dock is far from a law-abiding citizen. She has a past riddled with criminal conduct. The truth is, the accused broke into the pawn brokery on the night in question with a loathsome intent. As we can no doubt see in this print that depicts her threatening the victim with the murder weapon. And I have here in my possession one more piece of evidence the prosecution wishes to present. The dubious disc! to all this. Good gracious! Make no mistake, any sympathy for the accused on account of her years is misguided and dangerous. There are no depths to which this girl would not stoop if pushed, no crime she would not commit. The court forgets that fact at its peril. Hmm, I see. I think it would be prudent to take this music box disc into evidence, counsel. A grim test oh, up, 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 up. I, uh... Gregson? Yes, Inspector. We had a meeting yesterday at the yard with the prosecution service, and, um... I think it was agreed the disc wouldn't be used as evidence. I am unaware of any such meeting. But those were the instructions right from the top! The government bigwigs were insistent! Inspector, I am the prosecutor and I alone determine how to present my case. Your warning is noted. Thank you. Indeed. I rest my case. Here we go. Guilty. 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 Jesus Christ, can I not go 10 fucking minutes without a summation examination?
here we go. This case is real gnarly. Jesus Christ, these two are impossible. Um, okay, that one we can maybe move on. Don't know about that guy. What the fuck are you talking about? I am ballistics expert. I have seen uh, many shootings. There is nothing I do not know about the gun. Oh? We're going to start on the Russian. Hold it! Why would you say that shit? Thought you were a tourist? I am visiting London for sightseeing. So you're a ballistics expert, who knew? I have much experience with gun. Ah, I have lived through many, uh, how you say, uh, extreme, violent uh, bath of, no, blood of, uh, violent blood baths, perhaps. Uh, da, those, extreme violent blood bath. English is very difficult, Tom. Anyway, if you have question about bullet and gun, you ask me. There is nothing I do not know. No mystery I cannot solve. But, uh, if possible, please, only in Russian language. Well. I'm gonna talk to this guy about the fucking weapon. Hey, kid. How do I... Wait. How do I do this? Hold it! Oh, there's no way to do it. Okay. I could do two and six again. That one, that one worked pretty well. This guy sucks. Let's talk to this lady again. Hold it! Number of bullets has you convinced. bullets somewhere of which we were unaware and have to reconsider my position. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Third bullet. Fucking shit, dude. I don't fucking have... I don't have any evidence that says that. No, there's no way I can prove that. Uh, you know what, actually? While we're here, let's... Let's examine this. <gasps> oh, wait, blood. What are we working with here? Green? But it can't be green. We're pretty sure green is Sholmes' blood. Right? Hold up, hold up.
There's no way that's the way, right? Take that. Okay. <sighs> okay. Uh, let's let's come back. Hold it. Hold it. I beg your pardon. Yes. No. You ever heard of America? Making assumptions about people because they're a soldier or pickpocket is wrong and dangerous. Well, yes, you might have a point there. But let's not forget the girl had shown she had it in her. Are you referring to this? Exactly. Tried to swipe it a day earlier. Not fun. Used caramel bars to make a copy. I don't know what tune it plays. Okay, we already did that. Thank you for telling me to do that. Hold it! This man is insane. Alright, this guy is useless to us. Yeah, I, I gotta agree. What is this guy talking about? Hold it! And the thing is, I couldn't really say it has nothing to do with his trap. Oh? There's no question the man was shot, but the bullet had simply vanished from his stomach. What? You were operating on... You're fucking with me. Good lord! You're the surgeon that operated on Mr. Sholmes? Oh, that's right. you think I am, son? Uh, juror number four. I flipped him over. Like a pancake? Of course I did, and there wasn't a trace of injury. What? Okay, well... This is, um... This is the craziest jury of all time. Every person on this jury is super important. With the exception of her, who's an asshole. Okay, uh, we can pit her against... I mean, let's just press her. And we'll just say, okay. I can show her the third bullet. Uh, we can do that one. Is there a scene of the crime photo? Nope. Take that! Come on! You know what I'm trying to do. Fucking work with me here. We're scumming, we're scumming. Uh, Alright, let's pit her. What?
Okay. How do I show her the additional bullet? Armband, thank you. It's this right here. I just I don't have that. I keep clicking. Oh my god. This one is so hard. What the fuck? I had to ask him twice. Objection. Hey, these don't contradict each other, but we have a... Oh, a ballistics expert. Uh, pit, 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 uh... On the night in question, Mr. Sholmes was shot by one of the Skulkin brothers. Since there was no sign of an exit wound on his back, we must assume the bullet didn't pass through him. The bullet was found and lodged in Mr. Sholmes' body either. Furthermore, a bullet was found lodged in the wall of the shop where Mr. Sholmes was shot. Turn number six. Hello, my name is Velen. Pleased to meet you. Whoa! This apparent contradiction in the facts that is so clearly troubling juror number four. Are you able to explain the mystery? I have seen very similar situation in Motherland. It was night. There was blizzard. I was running away long mountain road and freezing cold. The snow piling high on both sides of road, very narrow and dangerous. My pursuers had hunting rifles and they were on dog sled. Jesus Christ. Shot from behind and I fell down in snow. Uh, this situation was very similar to what I hear today from doctor. They could not find bullet in the body, and no sign of, uh, how you say, uh, exit wound. Then where did the bullet go? Mmm, bullet never hit me. Well, if it never hit you, why'd you fall down? A bullet hit frozen wall of ice very close to my side. Uh, one small piece, very sharp, broke away from a lump of ice and pierced my body. Holy shit, I know what's going on. It made deep wound, looks just like bullet. Good gracious! Uh, of course, piece of ice quickly melt inside me, uh, and that is solution to mystery of disappearing bullet. But that doesn't answer the question at all! Hmm? The shooting happened at a pawnbroker shop! Not some snowy mountain road! Ugh. Just an idea, but we might not be looking at exactly the same situation here. There's a pouch on his belt. Three glass files of chemicals. Doctor, where is the pouch? Well, the fellow had nothing like that on his person. If I may... Uh, yeah! While I realize it is forbidden for the prosecution to interject during a summation examination, I should inform the defense I have the pouch in question in the antechamber outside the courtroom. As I understand it, when the police arrived on the scene and found Mr. Sholmes injured, they removed the pouch in order to assess the wound. Thank goodness! Since then, it has been in my safekeeping, along with all the other evidence relating to this case. I can personally vouch for the fact it has not been touched since the incident occurred. Give it! One of the vials is broken, and the leather around it is scorched black. It's as if the file exploded. So, that night... The bullet from the Skulkin Brothers gun struck Mr. Sholmes' pouch. It was the glass vial exploding that caused the fellow's injury. Uh, this bullet did not penetrate victim, but was deflected into wall of shop. Mm. 
A delightfully complex aroma. Well, one mystery solved. Though it has no bearing on the truth of this case. The bungling and burgling brothers shot the detective and the accused shot at the pawnbroker. <sighs> Thank you very much. Glad I could help. <sighs> All right, let's check it out. I'm going to check it out. Oh my god. This is so fucking stupid. There's the fucking bullet! So fucking back. They wanted me to literally present an item called the third bullet. Take that! Hold it! HOLD IT! You can't fucking present evidence in the middle of this! You Nipponese conjurer! Where did you find that bullet? It was lodged inside Mr. Sholmes's pouch. What? This pouch was removed from around Mr. Sholmes's waist before he was taken to the hospital, and since then it has been touched by no one. Uh, do you mean to say, the shot fired by the Skulkin brothers that night? Yes, as your lordship has surmised, it hit this pouch. But that makes no sense whatsoever! We already know the whereabouts of the bullet fired at Mr. Sholmes. It's visible in this photographic print. Is it now? Two guns from the scene have already been submitted into the court record as evidence. Er, yes, that of Mr. Windebank and that belonging to the Skulkin brothers. And examination of both guns revealed that only a single bullet had been fired from each. But, but that must mean... That's right. We now know that on the night in question, three bullets were fired. However, only two were fired from the guns recovered from the crime scene. We cannot and must not pass judgment. Ugh. Oh, whoa. Daddy. Order! While the summation examination remains incomplete, the court has been presented with new facts. Facts that would appear to shake the very foundations upon the case in which the defense has been built. As it is my prerogative in this situation, I hereby temporarily suspend the summation examination. Bailiff, bring the witnesses back to the stand. Holy shit. Do not fucking bring them back. Oh my god. Do not bring these guys back. Holy. They are going to get fucking sniped from across the room. We was, governor. Perhaps we can dispense with the tedious preamble. A third bullet has been identified at the scene of the crime. What do you make of that? Make of it, Gov! Uh, I did. Is it one of yours? Go blimey, Gov! Go blimey! Not a chance! In that case, did you have an accomplice? Oh, what? Uh, what, what? What? Never! The Skulking Brothers work alone! It's just the two of us! How soon we forget poor Skulky. Only two of the bullets from the crime scene originated from the firearms we have in evidence. The third bullet was fired from another gun. Where is it? Ah, oh, Lomi, that's, that's an head scratcher. <laughs> hmm. Counsel for the defense. Yes? Now, I should like to hear your thoughts regarding these new developments. The third bullet and the mysterious missing firearm from whence it came. What do you want me to fucking say? It's crazy. That shit's nuts. Ah, 
I think they had an accomplice. Uh. The witnesses are doing their best to cover up the existence of an accomplice, but the evidence points to the fact that there was someone else present. Someone carrying a gun. Objection! Objection! An accomplice, you say. Pig swill. These protracted proceedings have already forced us to endure two summation examinations. Yet in all that time, there has been not a murmur of a third man. Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't fucking... Oh, I guess I do actually have evidence. Oh, fuck. Well, I don't know that. Okay, I can give you the first one. The identity. What the fuck? I can't do the identity. Now, but now it is our time to unload some fucking evidence. Yeah, we'll do it. blood sample portfolio. Take that! The evidence is right here, in this portfolio. This is where Van Zeeks gets to get fucked that we were withholding evidence. Suck my dick. Do you expect the court to rifle through your papers? Be more specific. You claim one of those blood samples proves the presence of this third intruder. Which one is it? It should be pretty simple, actually. This one right here. Take that! That's a blood stain, my lord. A blood stain? Green blood. It's something developed by Mr. Hairlock Sholmes. By the great detective! New invention, not yet appeared in stores. It's this, you see. It doesn't have a name yet, though. This fogger sprays a chemical that reacts with the different elements in people's blood to change its color. Yes. Everyone's blood is slightly different, you see, because it's made up of different elements. So by seeing what color it changes to, you can tell in a flash whose blood it is. As an example, this one shows the blood of the victim, Mr. Windebank. A striking blue. Yes, so you see the green color of this blood stain on the calendar shows someone else was shot in the main part of the shop. Now hold the fire there, young man. Could be from some unrelated incident, could it? Well, hardly. The date showing on the calendar is the date in which Mr. Windebank was killed. Therefore, we can assume whoever was shot, they were shot on the same day. Whose blood is it? Well, the Skulkin brothers in the stand don't appear to be suffering from any gunshot injuries, which means it must be the blood of someone else. The sus imposter, in fact. Jesus Christ, I have no idea who it is. I literally don't know. Uh, I actually have one guess. Objection! Whose identity the court is still waiting to hear? There's only one guy who it could be. This fucking guy. It could be this guy. I mean, he... Oh, Jesus Christ. We don't have any other options. We gotta just present a guy. Take that! Eggert Benedict. He paid a visit to Windebank's pawnbroker in the afternoon before the incident took place. And the accused attempted to deceive the pawnbroker into releasing this article in her possession. That's right. The man identified by the defense, Mr. Eggert Benedict, then attempted to take the article from the defendant by force. Ah, yes, right. The article in question belongs to me. You remember this guy? Inspector Gregson was there at the time and can attest to what happened. In the end, it was the inspector himself who took the disc. Uh, yes, my lord, that's more or less what happened. Uh, I asked Windebank for a print showing a fellow. 
Oh, there he is. You claim this man is the brother's accomplice? Well, Mr. and Mr. Skulkin. Eh, never seen a geezer before in me life. On me life, gov, on me life. These two are going to be murdered. Well, someone unsurprisingly, it appears our witnesses disagree. I'm sure your lordship recalls my learned Nipponese friend's actual assertion, which was he could prove the identity of the alleged accomplice. In fact, I can. I, I do have, do have the ability. As I mentioned before, on the afternoon of the day in question, the defendant attempted, deceitfully admittedly, to reclaim this disc. That's correct, my lord. I myself was present at the time. I was following this that a minor incident occurred. Very well. Then I shall bid you farewell. Say goodbye to style. Wait a minute, that disc is mine! Ah, rah, 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 rah. ah, what do you think you're doing, you little tramp? You've drawn blood, you filthy animal. Being a music box disc, it has countless small but sharp metal protrusions all over the surface. They cause Mr. Benedict's finger to bleed. The smear of blood is visible on the disc now. My assistant and I have just used the big fucking gun. And we added the results to this portfolio. What would you believe? Green, just like the blood on the calendar. The evidence is conclusive. The man calling himself Egret Benedict, who is in Windebanks, is the accomplice who was present at the scene of the crime that night. Oh my god, weird. this is getting so crazy. My lord, it is the opinion of the defense that Mr. Eggert Benedict should be summoned to the courtroom to testify. Hmm. Okay. Objection. Objection! This has gone on long enough now. This flagrant ignorance of the mechanics of law. We learned it in a fucking fortnight. Herlock Sholmes, you say? Yes, I've heard the name. The protagonist in a series of short stories for the vulgar classes. A god of detection or some such. And now you employ chemical substances devised by this fantastical persona in the highest court in the land. Do you expect us to take you seriously? The samples made by this plaything are not fit to be called evidence. So the bloodstain turned a shade of green. What of it? Here's to you successfully proving that no other blood in the world would turn the same color. Shut up. God, you are such... Oh, man. Do not even think of suggesting we should take Mr. Sholmes' word for it. <laughs> Father Christmas. Oh. Oh. Well, guess what, Van Zeeks? It doesn't matter what you think. It matters what all of the other people think. Young lady, you have quite the devious mind. How many is our, our Herlock Sholmes fans? Unbelievable! <laughs> Sharpshooter. This is absurd! Alright, where are we going? Uh... Not guilty. Oh. Not guilty. Oh. Not guilty. Oh. Guilty. Ah, uh, okay. Guilty! Alright. Not guilty. Oh, thank you. God. Thank you, you fucking Russian. Oh, okay, we're we're still in this. Okay. Good enough. Objection. Objection. My lord, with all due respect, this is an outrage. The prosecution refuses to accept this decision. Why? If these jurors are persuaded by some half-baked concoction devised by a pretender to real police work, they are too ignorant to be trusted with the judgment of anyone's guilt. 
You stupid fuck. Ah. This little sexy moan thing. We find ourselves in an awkward situation. The defense has very reasonably requested the subpoena of a new witness. But sadly, I fear that will be impossible. What? The name the gentleman gave for himself, Egger to Benedict, is false. Well... Um, could I say something? Oh. Oh my god! How- How- This is the craziest jury of all time! No! Good gracious! What is with the jury? Order! Juror number five! What the fuck? I'm a communications officer. Stop. As we can clearly see. The gentleman in the photograph is- Stop! Also a communications officer. Stop. He works in my office. He's the one who's sending the fucking messages! From the paper! And these two, uh, witnesses, kill them. <laughs> oh my god!